we are going to be showing off some very, very cool technology called Vorpal Board, which is now on Kickstarter. We'll talk about that more in a sec, but if you want to check out the campaign already, do exclamation point KS in chat. Some quick introductions uh, really quick. My name is Jordan, a.k.a. Axel Hellfire. I'm Sam, a.k.a. DJ Fluffkins. And we are joined by two of our special guests this evening. Many of you already know Mr. Draco, who is one of our mods, has been on the stream before and is in chat a lot. Say hello, Mr. Draco. Hello, everyone. And you were we supposed have... to say hello, Mr. Draco. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we also have one of the creators of Vorpal Board with us this evening, James. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Hey, thanks for having me on. Hi, everybody. So, James, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Vorpal Board is? What led you guys to kind of create this product? And, you know, what kind of problem are you trying to solve with this? So Vorpal Board is a platform for playing tabletop games online using the actual fam uh, pieces. And so the basic idea is to try to let you just put your games out on a table and uh, stream what's on the table and let other people who are remote see what you're seeing and interact with what you're playing with. Uh, and the, the problem that I'm trying to solve is... Um, I moved across the country from my gaming group and then I didn't have a gaming group and I wanted to play the games that I had with the folks that I lived back with in Wisconsin. And um, and so I, I'm a software engineer, so I started kind of tinkering with this and then like fast forward uh, thousands of hours of development and years of my life and like tons of gray hair that you guys can probably see on the <laughs> on the on the stream. And um, and uh, and then we, we have where we are today, which is a playable beta. We're going to be um, playing it tonight. And then um, we brought the platform to kickstarter in hopes to kind of build it into an actual business sweet now uh there's a couple different components to this right there's the web interface that we're seeing now where we're chatting with each other and people can see some game components and then there's also some physical pieces to it as well and some apps right Right. So um, the thing that you're seeing right now is just a web application. So it just runs in a browser. It's not software you need to install or anything like that. Um, and then the, the pieces that actually do kind of the streaming um, component is there's an arm uh, that mounts above your table and holds a cell phone. And um, that right here. Yep. And there's there's the arm that Jordan has. And essentially, it's like a really, really long segmented arm that that bends. And then on the end, it just has a cell phone holder that can rotate 360 degrees in two different directions. So essentially, we, we just have a way to really get that camera exactly mounted above the board. Uh, and that's uh, one of the physical components. And then the other physical component is what we call the card scanning box. And what the card scanning box is, is a wooden box. It looks um, kind of like, a, well, it operates kind of like a desktop scanner where you can open up a doorway on the top of it and then put cards in there face down. And when cards are in there face down on that glass, you can't really see the glass because obviously it's clear. Um, you can, uh, using a cell phone that's sitting in the box, it will scan cards um, and you can see a bunch of, in this interface right now, these cards were scanned in uh, in that fashion. So um, the, the main idea there being you can take cards off the top of a deck not look at them, put them face down in the box and scan them for people without actually um, losing the secrecy of the card, which we realized was pretty important to playing games generally. Awesome. So tonight, everyone, we are going to be playing Mysterium. Uh, hopefully you all know a little bit about this game. We're not going to go into all of the details because this is about Vorpal Board and not Mysterium. Um, but Mysterium is essentially a cooperative game where the ghost in this case james who has the physical setup uh of the vorpal board equipment will be providing clues to uh myself and mr draco and chat who will play through sam by proxy uh to solve a trio of murders using uh clue cards that have images that relate to uh the cards that he's trying to get us to guess um, so with that said, um, why don't we start off by kind of just talking about the layout here and everything we've got, 
Um, so I guess first, chat needs to pick a color uh, of what player they want to be uh, of these player cards that we have here to the left of the board. Um, and that way we will know which color chat is throughout all of them. James has the physical card set up. So everything you see on the screen here uh, in terms of game components is either an ongoing camera stream uh, through James's arm uh, phone and then uh, or cards that he has scanned in through the card scanning box. So everything here has come from James's physical copy of the game, though uh, in theory, I also owning Mysterium could have scanned in some of these components from my own separate phone uh, as well, which is actually kind of cool. So as, as you can see, I'm demoing the like the hover zoom feature. Um, so you can see like exactly what the cards look like. And these are all based on the scans that James put in through through the app. So I think uh, Mark voted for blue. Uh, any other votes in chat? Blue's a great color. That's what that's what I would vote for, but I'm not I'm not playing for chat. <laughs> so while chat's voting on their color, James, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what some of the different pledge levels are in the Kickstarter campaign? Yeah, so we have two major um, pledge levels here. One is for the arm and then 12 months of hosting subscription. So one of the things to talk about is that this, the model that we're bringing this uh, product to market is that the host would pay a subscription fee to use the platform of $5 a month. And then remote players are free and don't need accounts or anything like that. So in this scenario that we're sitting in right now, I would be the host and I would pay the $5. And then all of you who are remote would just be able to play with me um and not have to worry about it so um the way that we have it on kickstarter is pledge level one is 75 dollars for one year of hosting access and then the arm that mounts the uh the phone to the board and then the um the second pledge level is 125 dollars which would be the arm one year of hosting access and the card scanning box and okay. the reason that we wanted to do the two pledge levels, uh, the arm only option is probably a better match for like tabletop role playing game players who don't right. really need to scan a lot of cards. Depending, not on the game everybody has the need for the box. Right, exactly. So we wanted to have both of those levels. Makes sense. And we had a question from chat: uh, the five dollars per month that is unlimited games within that month. Oh yeah, yeah, unlimited yeah. games, unlimited players, uh, whatever. I mean, essentially it's just access to the tools, the streaming, the apps and the streaming system. So you can use it as much as you want and, and all that right. sort of stuff, yeah. And uh, another thing that I wanted to point out just to follow up on what you're talking about with the pledge levels is that um, even if, you are, if you're someone who doesn't have a need for a lot of card scanning, the app still supports card scanning without the box if you need it, you're just going to get not, you get a higher quality scan with the box because of the way it's able to control the lighting on the cards and keep the phone steady and all of that. Um, but in theory, if you did the arm only subscription and you had a very occasional need to scan a card, like if you're doing a role playing game and you needed to like write down something and put it into the game, you could do that with the app even on that pledge level. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can also just bring in assets from your phone as well. You don't even need to do like the scanning. So let's say you found a play mat or something on BGG that you wanted to just like bring into your game session. You mm -hmm. can select that JPEG from your phone and it would appear in here yeah. as like an interactable object. So yeah, definitely people can get by without the box if it's very rare that they would be playing games that do a lot of scanning. Yep. That sounds like a yeah. really good use case for print and plays. Yeah. Yep. And, I, and it's it's interesting because I um I have been asked a couple times if we have the ability um to actually write on uh, any of the objects, and we don't right now, like using your mouse or something like that. Uh, but but we have it on the list as a potential enhancement in the future. Yep. Just to just to answer some questions from chat. Um, so K Bots asks, can you make your own box? Um, I think the answer is yes, right? But you you do a specific detection based on a pink or a fuchsia card. Correct. Yeah, you could definitely build your own box um, if you wanted to. Um, 
we've spent a lot of time building this one so <laughs> i uh i i i just caution it it is a bunch of work but like if you only have to if you only have to do it every once in a while you absolutely could yeah we we use a, a neon pink backing to pick up the cards so um the actual box itself has a neon pink color on the inside and that's how we detect the cards that get scanned in and so um oh there it is yep and so the um so so you would just need to get like a, a a neon pink color that you could build into your box as jordan mentioned you can scan with just holding the card or the holding the phone and we're shipping with the product a a backer sheet that's the neon pink just that you could use by hand if you wanted to so we're trying to make it so we have just a, there's the pink sheet yep um so we're just trying to make it so there's uh a lot of different options so you can kind of to to buy in the way you want the way you think you might use it but then also a lot of flexibility in how it works when you're trying to get a game running on it because we built a generalized tool set it's not specific to any game so we've kind of tried to make it so it sort of generically works for a lot of different games yep and then kate bots also asked you know if you scan all the cards can you can the app deal them so i think it's like shuffle and deal maybe for deck building games yeah currently no um we're we're considering that um like some deck building uh capabilities to actually scan in a lot of cards if you if you had a um if you had a game that had like 50 or 60 cards it's possible in the future that we'd let you scan in all of them um and then kind of play purely digitally we don't support it right now um and i know that's not like a outstanding answer but right. uh but it definitely it's a little bit different of a use case than we consider because normally we're we're scanning in you know 10 or 15 cards at a time um yep. and, and we're not kind of thinking of this as like a total digital replacement we're thinking of right. it more as like playing it facilitating playing the physical yeah. game so well, one thing i wanted to point out is if you're thinking about you know can the app deal the cards you have to realize that you're increasing the setup time for the game because you have to individually scan every possible card that can be shuffled. Whereas if the person who has the game locally is just shuffling the deck and scanning in cards as they get drawn, then all you have to manage in the app is somebody's current hand or tableau of cards that are be have been pulled out of a deck and all of the shuffling can be done in person, uh, which would save you a lot of time. There's also these uh, sheets of paper that the person who uh, is running the physical game can put cards on in order to keep track of which cards are which in the digital version, uh, which will you'll see as we start scanning more cards in. So why don't we go ahead and get started playing the game. Uh, definitely keep the questions going. Uh, as we go through, we're happy to keep answering them, uh, but we really want to just show you all what the gameplay looks like if you were to actually play a game uh, with this system. All right, so did Chad end up being blue? Sam, was that the final I'm move? I'm going to be okay, blue. Cool. Okay. Uh, Mr. Draco, go ahead and pick the next color. I am going to pick yellow. Okay. And I'll go ahead and be red. And Sam just demonstrated something, though it's harder for you all to see, so I'm going to demonstrate the same thing, which is picking up a card to claim it actually flips it over so that no one else can see it. Uh, and so that way, this is how you would have private hands in this game. Uh, is you can pick up cards and they would go into your hand. Uh, and cards, when they come into the game, uh, I believe come in face down. And That's so right. yep. uh, you would be able to you know, James would be able to scan in a card, which he'll do, and he'll be like, this card is your card, uh, and you would be able to pick it up rather than showing it to everyone for games that have private information. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this player's tokens off to the side since we're not using it, and just flip those over really quick, and we'll just leave them over there. Um, so to start off, uh, we're all trying to guess, uh, one of the, each of us have one of these six people, uh, down here and no one, no one can have the same one. So I have one that I'm going for. Mr. Draco has one that he's going for and chat. You have one that you're going for. Uh, and James right now has a hand of seven, uh, cards that just have images on them. And he's going to look through and pick a set of cards 
anywhere from one to seven of them and scan them in to give to a single player and then he's going to draw back up to seven and do the same thing for the other two players until all three players have clues and then we're going to use those clues to try and decide which person he's trying to get each of us to guess uh Katebot said can you multi-stream all the players and have only that broadcaster's cards visible uh what do you mean by that question kate i'm not sure i quite understood it oh we cannot hear you sam in vorpal i think she means if we were all playing together that like uh -huh. we could reveal our hands to chat in turn so like uh... it would be a multi-stream but then like when it's your turn your cards are visible when it's my turn my cards are visible uh, i think the answer is like no not right now it like yes. to me that would be like a um i guess i'm gonna call it like god mode um in in the board where you know you could say okay like give me the view from jordan or give me the view yes. from like yeah you could do you okay. could do that you could do that yes everyone could stream their own everyone could stream to a separate channel and stream their what they're seeing in Vorpal board, and then you could see everyone's private cards if you wanted to do that. And in fact, you could do that via squad stream on Twitch. You could set up a squad stream where everyone is streaming what they're seeing in Vorpal board, and people could watch the individual streams all in one view to see everyone's private hands if they wanted. Absolutely. Cool. Okay, so now it's, are you guys ready for me to give you some uh, to give you some visions? Yes. Yeah. So who? Yeah. I'm a spooky ghost, and I'm I, I was murdered. Ah. Somebody help me! Okay. Um. All right. So I'm going to give this. Uh, this is to. And normally, when you're playing this in person, the ghost doesn't talk. But um, I'm going to tell you, you know, who the because I can't actually physically uh, reach out and put it in front right. of the person. So uh, this is for chat. Okay. So this is a cooperative game. And since we do have the sort of clairvoyance betting function uh, taking place, we'll, um, we'll make all of these cards public. Um, as you play Mysterium, you can have the clue cards public or private. But I think with the clairvoyance feature where you can bet on what other people's guesses are, it's better to have all of the clue cards public so that you are making an educated guess as to whether you think the person is right. Um, okay. So this one is for who ended up being red. Is that you, Jordan? Yes. Now I can give, and just so chat knows, I can give one or more cards to so, two players. So chat, you got one card there. And that one card is for you to study and figure out which clue you think he's trying to indicate. In this mm. phase, it's the characters, right? Yep, yeah. we're in the characters. Only yeah. going for characters. All right. So, Chad, um, I'm just going to highlight each one of these for about 10 seconds so you guys can see them. Yeah. An another thing you can... I don't know if Sam has shown this to you all yet, but another cool thing that you can do is if you click on any card and then click the zoom button next to it, you can get a very nice full screen view of the card to really look at it in even higher detail um, and just kind of really study that one card which I think is awesome and then Mr. Draco this one is for you sometimes the choices as the ghost uh, <laughs> are tricky you don't always get good good options right it's true right uh and we can we can talk this out out loud. Chat, definitely feel free to talk through what your guesses are. Um, you can also help Mr. Draco and I if you think you know what ours are. So um, mm -mm. I have like a giant spider with a chandelier and a bunch of webs. I thought that was very clear, Jordan. <laughs> I mean, Jordan, do you think the the webs might be related to the threads, maybe? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, the only other one that I can think of is maybe the barber, but because of like the brush hair, but I think the thread web connection is stronger. So that's what I'm leaning towards. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move mine over there as my guests for now, um, but I might change that. Uh, Kate Potts, the table is not pink. The table is not a scan. It is actually a like camera feed that updates on an interval uh, and just captures everything the camera can see. Yeah, so you can actually see his hand jot in there. Nice. Um, <laughs> and the reason that you're seeing frames instead of like a smooth camera feed, it, and James can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's basically because they're taking very, very high res images of it, whereas a standard camera feed would not be uh, as high quality in terms of being able to give you the zoom and that sort of thing the way it's built right now. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like, I mean, most, most, most cameras nowadays can like, you know, do video in 1080p or even higher in 4K or something like that. But if you're trying to stream uh, a, a 1080p video in any sort of good um, frame rate, the quality is rough. If you try to zoom in on a, on a video, you get very pixelated results. Um, and right. a lot of cell phones will even stream at like 720 and then it's kind of a mess. Yeah. Um, and so this way, uh, depending on the game, you can up the resolution higher and higher so that you can read very fine text on the board, which is just not something you can do with like a video feed. So the photos, um, and then in addition, the photos save a lot of bandwidth. Uh, so, you know, if you're in an area that you don't have great internet, um, you don't have to rely on, you know, being able to push a, a really high res video feed. Yeah. So, Mr. Draco, what are you thinking? For me, I'm thinking either the woman with the threads, the one that Jordan picked, or the other one, because she's got like rulers and stuff. I'm looking at the shoes, like maybe somebody that makes shoes for a living, or interesting. Yep. Because I can't, I don't see a connection with like any of the keys. Or yeah, the keys make me think about like the mailman. I was also thinking the mailman. Yeah. What do, what do you all think, chat? Do you have any thoughts here? Oh, I'm sitting here thinking that was a police officer. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's definitely a mailman. Yeah. Um, hmm. It says post office in the bottom. I can so see I, that. Keys for, like, the post office box. Yeah, and, like, the, the mailman goes up to doors a lot, and there's a door in the picture. Yeah. The front door, which is where the mail goes. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um... And then chat, you you all have this knight uh, that looks to be swinging a sword at a spire that a princess's cap is like stranded at the top of, um, with like some knotted sheets hanging out a window. Yeah, I'm personally thinking like it's very aggressive, maybe, or so I'm thinking it's one of the either like the chef guy because he looks like kind of aggressive but i'm leaning more towards i'm guessing the driver okay i was thinking maybe the barber because... i'm thinking the barber too because uh, of the blade because of the blade, blade. yeah could be um while you guys are thinking one thing i'll throw out too um everybody has those pointers that are shared so you know chat will be able to see that the pointers are moving around and you can see whose pointers they are i turned mine off uh because as the ghost i don't want them to see what i'm looking at i don't want to see i don't want them to see what guys i'm hovering over um and so they won't see my purple they won't see my purple pointer anymore uh -huh. if i turn it back on they'll see my purple pointer again but i'm gonna turn it off so you can't you won't see uh i won't i don't want to give it away right um also chat we're we have another fun thing that we're gonna do tonight which is uh you know this chat's team is sam and chat and you all are kind of collaboratively making decisions throughout the game uh but if someone wants final decision making ability that would go to the last person to cheer in chat uh and so if you're the last person to cheer when chat needs to make a decision you get the final decision authority uh just as a little fun extra thing yep so yeah, mark I, looks like mark saying night with the barber i like that i think that's reasonable that makes sense or i'm going to the mailman in? I'm happy with mine. Are, are we all happy? 
Yeah, I'm good with mine. Okay. So mm. now, before we get anything revealed, um, we get to decide how we want to do our clairvoyance tokens. Now, uh, the clairvoyance tokens are small and an odd shape, so we don't have them scanned in here. Uh, but generally, every player has two votes where they can say, yes, I think this person other than myself was correct, and two votes where they can say that person was incorrect. And you can use all of those four tokens, but you don't get them back until the fourth round. So basically, you can make four guesses over the first three rounds in which case in during which time the other two players will have made a total of six guesses so uh i think that sam is correct sam and chat uh i'm even though i i think i'm hoping they're both correct but i'm actually going to vote incorrect on mr draco personally uh just playing the odds yeah, I think mine's iffy, but I'm still going to stay with it. So, uh, you can see there, James has actually laid the clairvoyance tokens there on the camera, uh, kind of next to the cards to indicate the decisions I've made. So, chat, you can choose to use your clairvoyance tokens or save them for future round. You don't have to use two of them. You could just do one. Um, and same for you, Mr. Draco. I'm going to use... I think yours is right, so I'd like to use one on you. Okay. What are you all thinking, chat? You can't vote on your own, but you can vote on myself or Mr. Draco to indicate uh, if you think it's correct or incorrect. By the way, James, uh, Howling Hog Game says hi. Oh, hey. Hey, Austin. How you doing? Those guys are great. Yeah, I also saw... Um, I think I saw Brand standing in chat uh, earlier as well. Uh, lots of awesome people in chat, but I definitely wanted to say hello to them because they have a pretty cool game uh, that I heard about recently. There they are. Yeah, all right. Okay, I mean, personally, I, I think Jordan is uh, is probably the one that I'm most confident about. I think I, I agree with Jordan that I'm not 100% sure with Draco, but I'm not not at the point where I want to vote no. What do you all think, chat? Do you agree with uh, Sam's thoughts there to vote correct on mine and then save the other token for now? So you guys can see that we're kind of doing something interesting here. I, I'm, I'm going to try not to mess this up too much, but uh, the cards, the player cards that we're voting on are actually cards that are scanned into the game as I've just shown by moving it. Um, so basically james laid out the board layout without the physical cards scanned in the physical cards so we could get those high quality zooms um because the card scanning is even higher quality than you get from the table camera uh and then he's just laying in these tokens next to the card so uh if if i or if sam hovers over the clairvoyance tokens you can actually see in the zoomed hover that there's no physical card next to them and james is just awesomely placing them in the <laughs> position they need to be uh so that they look like they're pointing at the cards which i think is a pretty awesome uh way to get the most out of this tech yeah it's one of those things where like earlier i was saying it's sometimes it's a little bit of a puzzle like you look at the tools you have and you say okay what's the best way yeah. to play the game yeah um and Technically, you could have put the cards on the yes. table as well. Right. Uh, but then you kind of get a situation where it's like, unless the cards are aligned perfectly and are the Correct. same size, then you, it kind of can look weird and have some double overlap. And but we yeah, have done, I, I've actually, there. yeah, I've played that way in real life before because if I had another person sitting here with me, which is how I often play, my wife and I will be sitting mm -hmm. at the table and we'll bring in a remote player where we would, we would do exactly what you just said, Jordan. We'd have the physical cards present, and then we'd put the digital ones on top so that people would get the close-up yeah. view. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Yeah. yeah. And they, like if somebody does want to sort of see, you can see there's just sort of, there's no cards over there. Yeah. Right? You know, it's just a, no. just, a, just a blank table. Sad blank table. Okay. Cool. All right, so is everybody locked in? So I think, I think I, uh, yeah. chat was saying trust Sam. So okay. let's go ahead and vote yeah, yes. I, I yep. Sam, nice. All right, so oh. 
Jordan, <laughs> you are correct. Woohoo! All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up that card uh, and put it over with my marker so that I know it's mine. And then the people who voted yes, which is everyone, will get a point on the clairvoyance tracker. And you can see that James just moved your to use tokens off to the right to indicate that you don't have them right now. Cool. So you all just got two points. So or one point, one point. All right, sorry. Move the two far. Move the two far. <laughs> Extra points. Okay, so Sam is correct. Sam now has uh, his person. Nice. Um, cool. Chat is correct. Wait, so, oh, sorry, good. sorry. I, I, I said Sam, I meant Jordan. Jordan is correct, okay. and also Sam and Chat are correct. Great. So that means I voted yes and get a point. And uh, as you guys can see, I've moved Sam and my uh, player tokens up to the next level because next round we'll be voting on locations. All right. And Mr. Draco is incorrect. I had a sinking Ooh. feeling. <sighs> so Mr. Draco goes back down here. And what we can do is we can actually flip over the incorrect one since uh, myself and chat have already moved on to the next round. We can just flip that card over because we know it's wrong and no one's going to need it. We could also delete it, uh, but I'm going to leave it there just as a visual reminder that we have one wrong answer so far. Um... Oh, crap. Oh, God. Oh, God. What have you done, Sam? I didn't mean to do that. Wait, hold on. <laughs> you can fix it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Oh. Don't move. Actually, I was trying to drag around the board. Wait, yeah, it's a perfect time. Board, we can, we? yeah, that's a perfect time to actually point out that there's hey, a button to lock the board down at the All bottom. Right, Sam, there. try and mess it up again. <laughs> oh, what? No, he's got to lock it himself. Yeah, he, he has to lock oh, it himself. Yeah, it's a okay. It's a personal lock. Okay, I right. thought everyone could lock it. Right. So once Sam locks okay. it, he can't. He won't be uh, dragging the board around anymore. Wait, where's cool. the lock? Uh, it's the lock icon in the bottom right. Uh, it just locks the board. Got it. Yeah. Done. And then, yeah, then when you click and drag, it'll just drag the whole uh, visual. Good. Uh, okay, so um, Jordan got another point because he was right on Mr. Draco being wrong. So yay! Even that's. A I mean, thing. not yay, but yay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to round two. So this little, um, you'll see this clock down here goes to the second hour. Um, and, and essentially, everybody's got to get all the way up here to the top by, what is that, seven? The end of the seventh hour, yeah. Yep. Of course, it's got to be seven. All right, where did I put my cards? And the faster you get all three, you get bonus clairvoyance points for every round remaining at the time that you get the third uh, clue. Okay, so... Oh, oh, and we can also now delete the clue cards that we had. Uh, well... Uh, Draco should keep his, but we can delete the ones for the ones that uh, we got right. right. See, so they just spiral into oblivion, which is Ooh. nice. Then we don't have to ever think about them again because they're no longer relevant. Okay. For instances like this, wouldn't it be better just to set them aside so you wouldn't have to rescan them back in if you needed to use them uh, again? They won't come back. So it, in this game, there are enough cards that it's basically impossible for James to go through the whole deck. And once those cards have been used for a clue, they will never get used for anything else. Oh, okay. Uh, and they don't apply to the future guesses. So those clues had nothing to do with what we're guessing now. They were only to try and get us to get the person. Yeah, this game comes with an obscene amount of cards. Yeah, it's a huge stack. And the art is all awesome. Cool. All right, so whose card is this? Uh, that's going to uh, chat. All right. Look at us. We got Ooh, a moon, pretty. an umbrella, some rain. Okay. Start thinking, chat. Yeah, what some of these, man. Location is it? Okay, this one is for Jordan. Okay. So as you all can see, like the scanning is actually really fast. I mean, he still had the card in his hand when he said who it was for, and then it came in a couple seconds later at most. 
So it's, you know, you're you're looking at real time card scanning uh, in this quality, which I think is is one of the most incredible parts of this system, uh, especially for a game like Mysterium, where you need to be able to look at these cards in detail in order to really play it well. Um, KBots is asking if the chat or if it relies on the front facing camera as the only person who hasn't interacted with the box yet. <laughs> I can't answer that. Uh, it's uh, it's all real. It's all rear facing cameras. Everything is rear facing yeah. cameras. Yeah. So nice. you basically just there's a button on the phone at the bottom where you can click start scanning and then you just sit. I'll actually show you guys here. You just sit the phone in the box uh, face down and there's a little i don't think you'll be able to see it on my screen but maybe if i get close enough there's a line etched in the box uh a couple inches in that basically is where you should align your rear facing camera so if i i would just put my phone in like this and have it sit like so uh and then once i've hit the start scanning i it's not going to start scanning until it sees the pink background to actually be able to recognize boundaries so i can safely start scanning then insert it into the box and then every time i start putting cards in through the lid it'll just keep scanning cards all right so that one's for mr draco that 36 right there Interesting. <laughs> oh god interesting what 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 order do we want to go? Uh, I mean, chat. You guys already had some thoughts about your clues, so let's let's work on that one. Uh, I definitely heard some people say it was a water-based clue, possibly the pool. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm personally thinking the pool has a good opportunity. There's also an umbrella there, so you know, umbrella, water, oh. pool. It, it, You're it right. Feels pretty solid to me. Yeah. The other one I was thinking is maybe it could be like a moonlight clue, but there's yep. a lot of cards that have like rays of light coming in. So I definitely like water plus umbrella a lot better. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to put our token there for now. We can obviously move it, but I was thinking more of a night clue. So I was thinking about more of this one because of how, you know, it looks like it's in the middle of the night. Oh, there's an umbrella in this one too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. That's good point. And I, it looks like there's maybe a moon in the distance, but it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. All right. That's pretty strong though. The, the two umbrellas. So what 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 are you thinking about yours, Mr. Draco? The rat with the chess pieces, I have no clue. I was thinking maybe uh I don't know, I still don't know how your first clue goes in, but if I had just the second clue, I would think the chef because maybe it's like ratatouille. Ooh, I like that. I mean, I was also thinking like the chef is like Black a white. bigger guy. You know the the rat. Yeah, is I can see that in here. Mm -hmm. Um, and I I was thinking about so, but the other thing is I was thinking maybe once again it's the driver. Um, he's also kind of a big and imposing guy, but I'm wondering if like maybe the gloves have something to do with like the shoes in the first one. Just remembering oh. that there's like a connect. You know, the first one is obviously also a clue, so. He's a driver and he puts keys into the ignition. Could be, could be. But then what does the rat chest thing have to do with it? Is the, I guess- Well, the with the mustache, you got the whiskers. That's not bad. The and, whiskers on the rat and the mustache, yeah. you know, whiskers, so. And you could think of chess and racing as like competitions or sports. Yeah. In a way. I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna put that there for now. So I have a dude running down a hallway with a gem, being chased by a giant knight, shot by a lady in a painting, and there's like dogs coming after him. Um, I'm thinking the library just because of the knight statue. Yeah, that's good call. Good there's call. Also, a knight in the one with the dress though, and there's a lady in a dress in mine. So there's. 
There's a knight and a dress and an umbrella. <laughs> just just to make chat's clue even more confusing. There's actually an umbrella in three of these. Wow. Um, but yeah, so I have a lady in a dress and a knight and the attic one has a dress and a suit of armor. And then we have a knight in the library. I think it has to be one of those two. I don't think it's any of the others. Ch Chad is suggesting that it might be uh, the library. Library? Just say, decide to be confident. That Decide to be confident is a good way to do it, Mace. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, I think visually the knight in the library does look very close to the knight in my picture. So I would hope that if it was the attic, that he would not give me that clue, knowing that it also pointed so heavily to the library. And it's easier to think that he might have either missed the knight in the attic or was just hoping that the other knight was such an obvious tie-in that we'd go with that. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna agree with chat and go ahead and pick the library for mine. Um, so I guess this is another chance for people to do clairvoyance tokens unless someone wants to change their answer. Um, I only have two left, chat and Mr. Draco have three left, so you all should definitely use at least one this round, uh, because next round will be your last chance to use them before we get them all back. Yeah, I think, I think Jordan's right. I just... All right, uh, looks like we lost them, so I'm just going to reload the game real quick. Two wrongs and one right. I'm going to use my right on Mr. Draco. I think it's the... Well, no, no, I, I, I don't want to take that chance because the chef is still a possibility. Um, I'm going to use my, uh, no, I'm just going to save them both. I'm not going to do anything on mine. Okay. So Jordan's not using any of his. Mr. Draco has used a right on Jordan's guess. Yes. Chat. Are you unhappy with anyone's guess or at least <clears throat> maybe want to hedge your best bets? There's no penalty for being wrong other than the fact that you don't have the token until we get them back in two rounds. But you basically have to use at least one of your three tokens now because you can only make two guesses a round. All right, if you guys wanna take a look at the stream right now, um, I had to rest like restart, but I am not getting the board in the game right now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I see that. I also do not see the board on stream. Okay. Well, while we're looking into that, um, oh, J board. James is bringing in a new board. Yep. So uh, we'll let him take care just, of that. Yeah, I'll just put this over here. Sorry. Um, chat, how would you like to use your tokens? So if something does happen like this, chat, it is that easy to just bring the board back in. There we go. Sorry about that. So I, I'm personally thinking high probability on both Jordan and Draco being right on this one. Um, so do you want to use your correct on someone? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking correct on Jordan again. And then maybe, maybe we have... Maybe we have to, does it make sense that we kind of have to spend the incorrect or should we hold uh, it? No, cause you could still vote incorrect on both of us next round, right? Like if you think Draco is correct, next round he's going to ha have to do new, a whole new field of clues for the room. And if you think I'm correct, 
next round I'm gonna have to figure out the weapon. So there's a reasonable probability that we'll both have a harder time getting it right next round if you wanted to save them both. Trust Sam, trusting Jordan. Ugh, I don't know about that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mace Mace actually thinks the chef is the right choice. So I think Mace is maybe advocating uh that you hedge your bets on the race driver. Yeah. I mean, I You do have two wrong votes, chat. Yeah, I maybe maybe we should just vote the wrong right now. Even if you use one, you will have one wrong vote next round that you could use on one of us. There you go. Now you can see what you have left. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so everyone has two left. I'm choosing to save both of mine, and I think Mr. Draco's saving both of his, so the question is whether or not you guys want to use one or save them both. You have a little bit more agency doing it now if you think there's a chance that one of us is wrong, but if you're very confident in all of these, then... I guess you just take your chances that the clues are harder next right. round. Let's uh, let's just hedge. Let's hedge. We'll we'll vote no on on Draco. Okay. No one no one trusts Draco. Yeah. <laughs> Driver is wrong. All right, Mace, Mace is agreeing with this play. All, All right, right, everybody locked in. Everybody yep. locked in. All right. Okay, let's start with uh, Jordan. Jordan is correct. Woo! All right, let me grab this card. And everyone who voted for me gets party points. Yeah, so blue and yellow both get. Good job, chat. We puzzled it out. Okay, now we're moving on to chat. Chat is correct. Wow. Nice. Oh, I should full screen this again. There we go. Okay. And then moving on to Mr. Draco. Mr. Draco is incorrect. <laughs> yeah, chat is right again. <laughs> Ace called it. All right. Well, chat got another clairvoyance point. That's nice. So chat's up to three. <coughs> and uh, everybody else has two. And uh, I'm going to start giving you guys some new clues. All right. So uh, I'm just... I normally wouldn't say this during the middle of a game, but, uh, you know, just for people at home who maybe don't play this game as much, uh, in opportunities where you think people might be able to definitely get a guess, uh, you can use that as an opportunity to dump a bunch of cards without having to use one of your crows as the ghost, which is kind of uh, a neat little meta strategy. Uh, not always useful, but sometimes useful. Yeah, because, you know, for me, I would have to be pretty sure that Mr. Draco was going to get one of the one that I want him to get with right, the two cards that he has. Right. Um, yeah. We also need to update the clock. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We're on uh, third hour. Okay. Yeah, it you was see how like magic. Ghostly that was? Yeah. Ooh. Literal ghost. <laughs> okay. Um,. So I'm I'm actually I'm actually crowing it up here. I'm crowing it up. Okay. So for chat who uh, don't know what that means, uh, as the ghost, he gets a certain number of crows available each game, and he can use one crow to discard his entire hand of cards and get uh, more cards. So he basically was saying the seven cards he had were not good for any of us or not good enough, so he's dumping to get new cards. We're playing on medium, I believe. Uh, yeah, medium. Yep. Okay, that is for Mr. Draco. Yeah. We, we wanted to pick a mode that was somewhat challenging, but didn't want to go with hard mode because this isn't really about playing Mysterium. This is about Vorpal Board. Uh... To do, do. oh, interesting. Some the, books. The books make me think of the woman with the pen and the ink quill. Yeah. Oh my god. 
And that was like my first guess the first time too. Yeah, because of the shoes and yeah. But maybe, I don't see how the chess pieces in the right. Maybe would you fit play in, chess because you're smart and she's a teacher and she makes people smart. Uh -huh. Yeah, I could see that. Man, it's code That's names all one. over again. All right. That is for chat. Okay. Chat. We're getting close to the point where uh, Mr. Draco is going to have to win out in order to make it to the end. Yeah. One of the things of this game is that uh, if you, um, if not all three, if not all the players make it through all of their guests by the end of the seventh round, we just lose straight up and we don't go to the final round of guesses. Uh, so we definitely want to make sure that Mr. Draco makes it in um, because otherwise we all lose. And that's for Jordan. Okay. All right. So we're looking at weapons. Um, this is my actually my favorite clue combo. So I'm just going to go straight for that because I, I believe that is correct. Like Okay. Um, it looks like the iron. Yeah. So I'm personally thinking, you know, ladder, painting. Uh, the, the, the ladders are the ones that really get to me. And it makes me feel like it's either this left one here with the shears or like rope. Because I like just associate rope with like heights yeah. and things like that. I was not thinking of rope though for Jordan because of all the rope in the other card too. Ooh, that's, that's true. Good point. That's a good point. Yeah. That's true. So I'm just gonna place this here for now. Oh, Mace says rope. Yeah. What what is I was the also seeing like hammer because it's like workers on ladders, like or something like that, but I don't know. Alright. Sounds like chat all chat's voting Everybody pretty heavily on rope. rope. You need a ladder if you're going to use I a mean, rope. Jordan, you need to dump some of those no votes anyway. Right? I mean, I'm going to vote yes on Mr. Draco. Uh, that, that's a safe bet. Because I, I think it needs to be done. You guys might as well hedge your bet. Oh, wait, no. That's Mr. Draco's the one who has two left. Mr. Draco thinks we're both wrong, so we should hey, go yeah, if, rope. If y'all say <laughs> with your current answers, I'm going to say both of you are wrong. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you, you even if you didn't think we were wrong, you'd still be better off using them because there's no yeah. point not um you know what i i do think that the rope thing is a good point but i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with the iron in the hope that chat is correct about the rope right. um and so but i'm also going to vote no on chat in case I am the rope, and that way I cover all of my bases. I, I think I think we need to do the same thing. So I think we're gonna vote no on Jordan. Chat, you can uh, you can let me know if you. Chat don't agree is always with supreme. I I agree. Chat is supreme. We're trying right, to maximize guys, some points here. You guys locked in? Uh, chat, yeah. Any, any, all right, let's any start. Challenges to Jordan is wrong. <laughs> No one will challenge the assertion that I'm wrong. All right. So we're going to start with Jordan, and the iron is correct. Ooh. <gasps> yes. That means that's bad news for me, probably. Why? Well, because I voted no on the rope. Oh, gotcha. Now, uh, I mean... now we're going to go to chat, and the rope is wrong. Whoa. Yeah. Points. That's right, red and yellow moving up. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate the rope <laughs> to indicate gonna... to indicate that we've guessed it. And oh yeah, because it might be Mr. Draco's. Yeah. Yeah, Kate didn't vote rope, so Kate wasn't wrong. And then Mr. Draco is correct. It is the math Yay. writing woman. And you were right, right out of the gate, man. I thought you were gonna go from the yeah. beginning. Oh. We talked him out of it. Yeah. All right, Mr. Draco, go ahead and pick that up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete 
these other ones because they are no longer relevant. Yeah, and then I went with the chessboard because I was like, well, she's a smart person. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's tough. And then we concentrated too much on the rat. Yeah, you're right. I know. You put out like a chessboard, and then it's yeah. like also there's a rat there, you know? Yeah. So it is a giant rat. rat. Right. <laughs> All right. You can also uh, delete your cards now, Mr. Draco. Yeah. All right. So I. All right. So am everybody, done. Gets their, everybody gets their tokens back. And uh, I get four points for finishing this round. Yeah, because you finished four four rounds early, right? Yes. That's how that works? Okay. Yep. So you are up to eight. Which thankfully puts me to the point where I will get to see all the cards in the final round. Right. Okay. Uh, what is making a thing right or wrong, Maverick? Uh, so as the ghost, James has cards that... Uh, are have the same images as the six sets of this the three sets of six here and he has randomly drawn one card for each of us with each type and assigned it to us and in the actual game you have like a screen uh i don't know i have it yeah i have it you have a screen basically that had that you can slide all the cards into uh that hides the information from the other players so that you can figure out who each set belongs to um, so essentially, James has just randomly decided what cards everyone gets at the beginning of the game, and then he's just trying to get us to guess them. Yeah, so like in front of me, I have, since Jordan's done, I can show you, I have the three things he needed to guess, which I chose at random at the very beginning. And so this set is the three I needed to get him to guess, and I have similar sets for yeah. chat and for uh, Mr. Draco. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that'll come in handy at the end of the game, too, when we get to that point. Okay. So All I right. picked my cards, and I am now just voting, because I have clairvoyance tokens left. All right, so um, let's see what I have to deal with here. Okay. Uh, crow appears. He flies in. Caw, caw. Uh oh. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Jeez. We're go. We're running out of crows. He's only got three in this particular game mode. Yeah. Yeah. One of the worst things is when you do get your new cards when you flip through them all and you're like, oh, oh I've made yeah, I've made a terrible mistake. So. Sam, I assume you've already kind of shown people how they can uh, mess around with the cameras in Vorpal. Which cameras? Like the, our cameras. Sorry. Yes. Like the video cameras. Yes, okay. Yes. Because that that was an, we didn't really talk about it, but that's another cool feature is like the ability to rearrange and resize different people's cameras. That way, if you were like, you know, one thing we could do is if we were playing a game that had one player against everyone else you could make their camera bigger or something like that to indicate who it was and or rearrange it if you wanted to like have someone's camera near their section of the board if you had like four different player tableaus in some games hey that's for chat it's true lots of hats i do yes i do have lots of hats <laughs> i also have lots of All right. frisbees mounted on my wall cool so now I'm really confused. I do, uh, I do see the screw here, though. Look at look at that screw, chat. And that that next card, twenty two, is for Doctor Draco. Doctor. Yes. Oh, Mister Draco. Sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't Draco. want to assume. I know you haven't finished your PhD yet. Yeah. Looks, looks like some catfish there. Um, I love the catfish in the jar with the cherry things. All right. Chat, what are we thinking here? We got some flying books. We got a paper uh, airplane. We got a door. We have some screws. And then, of course, we have our ladder friends who were painting the night sky. 
I... I could be convinced of Hammer. I came back to Hammer because of the screw. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Need to see locations again. Um, well, so, you you want to help with the with Mr. Draco's? Okay. So here are the locations. Yes. We got this one. Then we got this one. Uh, but he he may not have had a thing with nails in it. Mark is what I'm thinking. Maybe he's just showing us like what kind of looks like a construction worker on a ladder and what looks like a screw coming out of a door to just kind of get us to think of tools and carpentry. And that's why I was thinking hammer. Um, so I'm thinking for Mr. Draco, we got this big bottle here. And it yeah, really I'm reminds me of the laboratory screw area. For yeah. This one. yeah, I definitely like the lab slash wine cellar thing. We got like, like, was it cherries or apples? What is that? <laughs> Maverick. Yeah, thankfully the location uh, has nothing to do with the weapon. Yeah, I was trying to think for Mr. Draco's. I, I definitely like the lab idea. Yeah, I think. I think that's solid. I think that's like yes vote worthy. Yeah, I would also vote yes on the lab because I might as well. Yeah. I mean, but so like, looking at the, like the vines and was it apples or cherries or whatever, and you got look at this one picture. You got some kind of trees out there. Oh. Yeah, it's true. You kind of have this curly tree thing. I mean, those could be like apple trees or cherry trees or... <sighs> but then again, you do have some kind of strange catfish. That would definitely be a laboratory. Yeah. Kind of All right. Well, chat, we've got, we got four tokens. Draco's you know the only what? one we can vote on. I'm going to vote no on Mr. Draco just, just to change things up. But I'm gonna vote yes on the Mr. hammer. Is Mr. Draco locked in on the lab? You going with the lab, Mr. Draco? Yeah, I think that feels the strongest. Yeah. I, for the record, Mr. Draco, I agree that the lab is the best option. I'm just hedging bets. Oh, whoops, sorry, I did the wrong. Thing. I'm trying to get. No, that's. I mean, <laughs> like the whole tree thing, that would be kind of like a stretch. I think the laboratory is a stronger. Yeah, the jar with the the jar. Yeah thing the flask i mean because with the cats and the fist that definitely be a laboratory creation yep. all right and then chat vote yes on the hammer and chat is locked in on the hammer uh, uh well i got three uh, votes for yes so i think we're good we're i'm gonna, gonna vote in. that sam is correct okay so ladders break doors <laughs> i clearly have no idea and then, yeah. Jordan, it doesn't really matter your votes, but if you're just going for, like, a min-max points here, are you going to vote on the hammer? Yes, I'm voting yes. I like collecting the points, even though I'm past the threshold. <laughs> Power gamer. Um, okay. okay. So, all right, everybody's locked in. And I'm going to start uh, with chat. Chat is correct. Woo! Everybody so, wins. So chat can move up. gets one. Oh man. Red gets one. And chat gets three for finishing, which puts them right one short of the threshold, which means they need to get something some guess right on Mr. Draco yep. to get over that threshold. Alright, so then Mr. Draco uh on the lab is correct. Yay. You mean like that, Jordan? Like that. All right, we'll get rid of these other locations. All right, so chat's in. And now we just got to work together uh, as a ghost team to get Mr. Draco through. All right, so we have four weapons left and three, I believe three rounds. Yeah. Yeah, we're, on, uh, we're on five right now. Great. So we're doing pretty good, chat. 
I'm just gonna move Draco up a little bit. Yeah, I zoom can in, zoom in a little bit. Get so. mine a little out of the way too. Uh oh, that's the last. <laughs> wow. Uh oh. Now we're stuck with it through to the end. Do you redraw after you run out of cards, or you're just you you have to use crows to redraw? Every no, time, every time you use any card, you draw back up to seven. Got it. Who? Yeah. So he's just been accumulating cards that were bad as he redrew for several rounds, and it finally just got unplayable. All right, that one is for Mr. Draco, and I'm only sending him one. Ooh. That looks like a rope. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I mean, there's a dead bug. There's some plates. There's some veggies. Probably the clock. Oh, yeah, definitely. This is a time joke. They're they're round like clocks. Yeah, no, round, exactly. Round no, that's a round plate. Wait, isn't that like a blade next to the beetle? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm we should vote yet. for a different one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Draco, are you going with the rope? Yes, I'm going to go with the rope. To All right, anybody Ooh. voting? Oh, I just kicked the table. Sorry. Anybody okay. voting? I'll vote yes. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm in the affirmative. Okay. Chat, do you agree with the rope? Should should chat vote yes, or do you want to overrule Sam and vote no just to troll him? You're not trolling <laughs> me. You're trolling yourselves. Oh. Kate votes no. Mace votes yes. We need a third vote. I think Sam's the tiebreaker there, unless oh, Chad okay. put unless no, Chad Mark's here. their own tie. Mister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that looks like three votes no. <laughs> yeah, it looks like yes. some no. I don't know. I think. <laughs> A spectral hand reaches out and changes the vote. All right. We're going with no. Mark voted with Mark, trust Mace. Mark voted trust Mace. <laughs> All right. So, Mr. Draco with the rope is correct. Woo! All right. So, Mr. Draco can move up. He gets two bonus points, so he gets into the two-card zone. Yay. So, this will be perfect. So... Let's talk about how the last round goes here. So we've solved all three of our sets of clues. Um, now, James, as the ghost, is going to pick one of these three sets to... Uh, and we should actually lay these out uh, so that they're visible to everyone again. Yep. Um, James is going to pick one of these three sets to be the real murder and he's not going to tell us which one he's just going to set it aside so that we he knows which one it is and then from his hand of seven cards he's going to pick three cards to give us clues to that set now his three cards do not necessarily have to have a one-to-one -one correlation with the three types of cards um but they it is helpful if they if he covers all of his bases as much as possible, that's kind of up for James to decide based on what cards he has. But the way this works is James is going to shuffle the three cards he's picked face down without looking at them. He's going to scan in two of them, and then we're going to reveal those two, and Mr. Draco is going to have to guess which set he thinks it is based on those two clues. Only chat and myself will be able to see all three clues because we got enough clairvoyance tokens. Does anyone know um, if I get to redraw seven or do I have to play with the seven I got? I believe you have to play with the seven you got. All right. Yeah. Um, at least I've. that's how and, I've played previously. And I, I think that lets me inform which set I want to go for, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I know what seven cards I have. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you have a set of seven cards that is easier to clue a certain set, definitely right. keep that in mind. Okay. So everybody just sort of like uh, uh, chat for a bit here while I figure out what the heck I'm going to do. Right. Yeah. So. As you can see here, guys, um, I know I know we haven't really specifically talked about it. Jordan mentioned uh, an accessory to the game. 
or to not to the game to the to Ripple board that helps you place mat the numbers and you can see here this icon that I'm holding that's that's the 27th card so when you scan if you're doing a lot of private hands you can say all right I'm going to scan this card I know it's the 27th card so I'll put it in a slot for that that way when the player says oh I want to play that card you know which card to play in the real game exactly and if I remember correctly uh, James can correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember correctly, as you delete cards, it basically frees up those numbers for them to be reassigned. So that's how you keep it from getting into like the hundreds. It'll correct. only assign numbers for however many cards are actually in the game at the time the card was scanned. That That's right. Yep. So if you were to scan in 70 cards, you could have a card that is at 70 even if you have less than 70 cards in the game because the numbers won't change once they're scanned in. But yeah, you it won't just keep climbing forever. And that way you can reuse those sheets that I showed you earlier that are numbered in terms of being able to lay out cards and keep track of them. And that's really handy if we have private cards um, because if you had like a private hand of cards, then James would have to scan in those cards without ever looking at them. And he'd need to be able to keep track of not only whose cards they were, but which one was which. So you could say like, I want you to play card number 15. Uh, and then he would reveal it uh, and set or set it aside or discard it or whatever so that he could keep track of the physical cards correctly. All right, I'm almost there. Yeah, so as an example, like, uh, if you're playing, say, like, Settlers of Catan, and um, you're scanning stuff in and out, in and out, in and out, you never really get over, like, eight or ten cards uh, that you need to mat out, because people are always playing down, essentially. Thank you, Mace and Mark, for those links. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Definitely go check out the campaign, y'all. Oh, no, it's fine. Spamming links in our chat. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I really shouldn't have played that third crow, everybody. Shouldn't have done it. I, I was, I didn't want to mention it, but yeah, as a, as a ghost, my strategy is almost always to save one crow one for the final crow. round so I can get a fresh wipe. But sometimes you have games where you just need to do it. Uh, it just depends. Okay, I have my selection. I have my three cards. I'm going to scan in uh, all three, and then you guys can just flip over the two for Mr. Draco to use. Okay. And while you're doing that, we have a little present for Mace for being nice enough to take care of posting that link in the chat for us. Welcome to the sub Shout team. Crows. Look at that. Hope you enjoy that sub oh, and your brand new emotes. Woo. The coolest emote obviously is the one of myself. Um, not the one that actually says cool. That one's not cool. <laughs> that one's um, the coolest. And definitely, definitely not this guy. I mean, he's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. All right, so we're going to flip 9 and 15. Is that good? The first two? Yeah, the first two is fine with me. Okay. All right, so this is a point where none of us can discuss it. So chat, don't say anything. Uh, I'll go ahead and make my decision in my head, and then chat can discuss with Sam on the third round. But right now, Mr. Draco is going to study those two clues, and then make his guess um james is actually laying out i was just i was just i was actually just going to show trades. what i was just going to show what thing how it looks if you were to yeah. zoom in on a board so while you guys are thinking yeah. like in chat you can kind of see obviously we get a lot better quality when we scan the cards in but there are games where you can play all the cards just on the board and you don't have to do the scanning it just depends on how close you need to be able to get to the cards right so Mr. Draco is going to think about these clues for a bit, and then he's just going to drag his player token over the player token of the set he thinks these two clues are indicating. Once he's done that, we'll flip these over. Uh, 
I will decide on my vote privately, and then you, chat, and Sam can talk about theirs. So, uh, I, I do want to remind everyone, because I, I don't think we talked about this a lot, but uh, everything you're seeing now is, of course, a prototype. Uh, this is not the final version of the software or the app or anything. Uh, this is just what they have complete so far in the process of developing it. So, uh, as with all of our Kickstarter, so chat, we can actually, you know, promos that we do, we can uh, chat just keep in mind that this will us. get even better than what you're seeing today uh, by the time you get to the finished product. Yeah, and a lot of the features that are kind of planned as part of the scope for the Kickstarter itself are included on that Kickstarter page. So you can kind of go and see some of the things you didn't see today, like things like theming, where you'll be able to sort of change the theme to have like a felt background, a green felt background, if you liked that better than the white grid, um, stuff like that. Um, and then the big one that you wouldn't see today is a game lobby. So you can kind of go out and find games to play with people um, or host games and look for other players. Uh, oh, but really yeah, cool. you can yeah you can definitely check out the the campaign page to sort of see our full plans. Uh, Kate, we're not working on a Twitch extension currently to be able to integrate directly with the system, um, but it, it's on our list for future. Uh, but um, but it's not something that we're working on right now. No. Could be super cool. You could you yeah. could potentially get the overlay extension to reveal cards to chat that like the players couldn't reveal right exactly yeah when we were thinking about like moving the mouse around and revealing cards and stuff like uh oh, yeah. Really need... yeah all right yep. that, that is pretty cool all right chat we're not gonna let um, them now, see what we're doing do you have um any sort of stretch goals with the campaign or is it just the pledge levels are the pledge levels and you guys have a woman. bunch of features that you're planning I to think build it's, the seamstress. it's just a matter of funding it so that you guys can actually finish the work and produce the product what do you guys yeah think? the latter um you know it's one of those things where we kind of know the scope of like the product we want to deliver especially yes. like on the hardware side and we were we're a first-time creator and you know, everything i read is like unless you really know what you're doing don't take a big chance on weird stretch goals because it could very much upset the apple card as far as like your uh, sourcing materials and your timeline and stuff. So we said, okay, we're going to totally. build the product the way we want. We're going to say what we're selling and like, that's it. Uh, and then, you know, this isn't a, a board game where once we ship it, it's done. This is a service that we're going to keep adding to. Um, so we're a little bit different than like a board game Kickstarter generally is uh, because, you know, yep. we're going to keep adding features. If this becomes a business that we can run, we'll be adding stuff based on, you know, product feedback and all that sort right. of thing. Totally. Absolutely makes sense. All right, uh, Mr. Draco, are you locked in on that guess? Oh, I'm 50 50. I don't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I Where... keep oh, going back and forth okay. between me and. Well, don't Jordan. tell us what you, don't tell us what else you're considering. Okay. Just we just want to yeah. know when you're locked in. Um, yeah, I think so too. So that we can flip good over call, the next card. I just didn't want to flip it over too early. All right, we're gonna talk. Uh, soon. Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna stay with it. Okay. Just, uh, that's my gut reaction. I'm just gonna stay with it. Okay. So now. Basically, in order for us to win at this co-op game, we need two people to pick the same thing uh, and, be right. and be right. Now, technically, in the normal way this game is played, we would actually not know what Mr. Draco has oh, right. voted yeah. for. Um, but I didn't want to think through the logistics of how exactly we would do that. Like, we could have done that by, like copying all of the player tokens and having you pick them up in your hand and like set one aside and then putting it down it would have been possible but you know it's not really about the game um so uh i just wanted to give mr draco a hey, chance Marie, to like make his decision before we saw the last clue so i'm gonna try and pick mine really quick and then Maverick uh, Mark, uh, a question in the chat about fixing a bad scan. So if we get like a bad scan on a card, like what does happen from time to time is if like the autofocus on the phone doesn't necessarily pick up the um, the card like very sharp, uh, the players can actually request uh, a refocus on the cameras using there's a little like button at the bottom and Sam, it's, a, it's the one that looks like a little target uh on the bottom and then the the players can say oh the cameras are out of focus and if they hit that button it'll fire an auto focus on all the cameras um so so that's how we would clean up um bad scans if uh if a focus problem happens okay and the other thing i wanted to point out for chat as they're thinking those about these clues is these clues aren't in any particular order so it's not like the first clue is for the first card or anything like that um and again, it may, might not even be a one-to-one -one mapping, depending on what clues 
James had to choose from. All right, so, um, so Jordan, do you have your vote in your mind? Almost. Uh, okay. Just need a little bit more time to think through the options. I hid my cursor so you all didn't know like what I was hovering over. Um, I see. Yeah. you guys all right if i plug some of the places that people can see this stuff absolutely uh so you guys can if if you want to see us playing other stuff um on the platform we do have a twitch channel it's uh vorpal board and uh all throughout the campaign we're going to be streaming a lot of um a lot of other games so uh we're Woo. planning to do some uh gloomhaven if anybody in the chat is into gloomhaven um and then we also have been having a lot of um uh designers come on not a lot but a lot is maybe a strong word there but we've started to have folks who are bringing games to kickstarter come on to actually play their their prototypes with us uh and friday today's wednesday right yep friday i'm going to be having um a guy named dan ackerman on and he's working on a game called techlandia which is um a board game about like tech bloggers trying to stop a, a lovecraftian a disaster happening at a cell phone reveal party so yeah, we're gonna play that together one. on friday so um so if you Those if you want to see us playing it live a lot you come on by uh and then the other thing is um you know at the kickstarter page itself we'll be announcing like other um events that we're doing youtube content that's coming out about the system all that sort of stuff so um you can find all that information on normal social media twitter or our newsletter at vorpalboard.com so and if you have feedback, if you didn't want to post it in chat or whatever, like, I want feedback. Like, I, I'd love to hear stuff that people don't like or games they'd like to see us play or whatever, um, because we're trying to build this system so people use it. You know, we're not just trying to push a product that nobody wants to use. So, Awesome. Uh, I am locked in. I know what I'm voting for. So, cool. Sam and chat, go ahead and have your discussion. All right. So, I think we've already been talking behind your back, because that's how <laughs> I rigged up the stream. Mace very much is in this boat right up here. Um, Mace Mace thought that uh, what, did Mace, what did Mace post? Iron is organ, library is chair, bed is seamstress. Um, interesting, interesting thoughts on that. I I think that's uh, it's a very interesting way to approach it. I personally was like, I realized the first guy, he's got this white hat. Look who else has a white hat, you know. That seemed pretty interesting. Obviously, the string and the rope also worked out well. Um, but yeah, it's up to chat now. Mace is the only one who has voted so far. K-Boss is thinking intently. It's, it's going to be interesting to explain everyone's reasons at the end. That's always fun. Is it, you know, like as the ghost, it's fun to be like, oh, guys, I'm so sorry. This is what I was trying. And then <laughs> to listen to people's reasons is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear why everyone voted the way they did. And then we'll all probably have completely wrong reasons to what your reasons were. Yeah. So, chat, what anybody else have thoughts? And again, reminder that maybe the set of cards together is meant to mean like something very specific about these uh, cards, or maybe he was trying to use like one clue to indicate one card in the set, and then that clue has nothing to do with the other two cards. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell what James's strategy was, um, so we kind of have to consider those possibilities. Kate's saying, let's wing it, so I think that's a vote for me. <laughs> so so i'm i'm doing a i'm gonna do this really pedantic thing to you here jordan i checked the rule book and, uh -huh. and and i did play this way uh one of the three cards must point to the character in the group another to a location and the final card to the object okay so, so one has to so that that is what i intended okay uh, but but yeah I, I i think that's kind of a dumb rule but i thought it was the rule okay yeah that's fine so we now know for sure that there is a one-to-one -one correlation between each of these clues and a card in that set. All right. 
I think we've uh, I think we were arrived at a at a pretty good majority that the top one is the right one. Got Daftaru. I've got Mace. Kate says wing it. Wing it basically means I'm right. So you know. I think we're in trouble. <laughs> oh, uh, interesting. All right, are we revealing? I what believe I believe clubs? in Draco apparently. <laughs> um. So. Let's go. I assume Chad is locking theirs in with Sam. Yeah. Okay. So here's my vote. <laughs> why did you vote wrong, Jordan? And then, <laughs> yeah. Why did oh, no. every, why did two people vote wrong? So it's so that means Sam. that means it's over, right? We definitely lost. Uh, which um, means one of us won. Right. One of us was right, and it's probably Chad. But before we find out i, I want to give each person a chance to explain their reasoning so we've kind of heard chat's reasoning so mr draco why don't you talk about your reasoning obviously you didn't see this card so you yes. saw two of the clues yeah <laughs> close the stream <laughs> he saw the rope yeah i saw the rope see i didn't know about the one card correlation rule or anything like that so but yeah i saw the rope holding the chair and i'm like okay the rope for the weapon could be it or the old, an old lady sitting in a chair. You know, I can see the correlation between those. Yep. The organ, to me, she comes off as a teacher, so maybe like a piano teacher. Or... Yeah. Could also be a basement organ, and that's yeah. a picture of a basement. Yeah. So my, my thoughts... Uh, <laughs> Were, I, I actually don't have a good correlation to the hammer, um, but that I was also not thinking of the one card per. I was thinking that James didn't have a good enough clues to do all of them. So my thought was that uh, the chair uh, in the middle picture here was actually the chair in the pool, like next to the pool, because they're Ooh. similar shape armchair style. Right, well, uh, I could and see then, like a barber chair, maybe. Right, and then I was also thinking that the, at, even if I was wrong about that one, that the, um, uh, like balance the ball that everything's balanced on in this left hand picture is kind of like a beach ball, which again brought me back to the pool, um, and so like that was like another tie to that one, and then I was thinking that the organ. Uh, would actually kind of tie to the barber because Sweeney Todd is a musical about a barber and an organ is a musical instrument. So that's kind of where I went with that one. All right. Which one of us got it? The, the winner is flip. the winner is Mr. Draco. Oh, yes. oh! Mr. Draco wins. So here's 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 what I was going for. I was I had some awful awful cards and so the one yeah. I wanted, the one that was like the most obvious that I just leaned into was the rope. Yeah. So so do one with a rope and hope that that was the one that got flipped over for Mr. Draco at least so then so I was people would go with the rope. Yeah. Um, the organ thing, I was trying to go with like those weird pipes on the the glass things. Oh, you know, kind of, kind of like, yeah. like the pipe things. And no, then, I totally see that. And then the the teacher one, like, I was like, okay, uh, maybe teachers like, are kind of like circus conductors, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you got the violin too. Yeah, the violin thing, but also like, it, it, to me, she kind of seemed like she has like uh, measuring stuff. Like maybe she's like a math teacher, and she she balanced this thing together that one was like the biggest stretch for me it was that totally. was the beach ball one so i was just like really hopeful that you guys would be like yeah rope done we're just leaning into rope yeah but uh but i blew it so no i i, I mean that was fine i i definitely gave strong consideration to the rope it would it wasn't until i was thinking about the pool and then i saw the chair in the pool that i started leaning towards that one yeah, I didn't think about yeah, yeah. And, and and then and of the course we had the beach ball and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean I, I focused. So my problem was I got hyper focused on the um, the I got hyper focused on the ones I was trying to get and didn't worry about the ones that could have also been misconstrued, right. which I think yeah. is a probably that's like a common mistake for the ghost. Yep, because then the rope also could have been like the 
uh, the string or whatever for the knitting lady. Right, exactly. Yeah, because so. it's so thin. It's such a thin rope. So, <laughs> so James gives bad clues but makes good products. That's all right. I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. That's fine. <laughs> um, and so I just I threw in one thing I wanted to show is like I just dragged in like a JPEG off my phone. So this was just like an Instagram picture I took uh, last week or something. Um, and so you can just add assets directly from your phone. I just wanted to kind of show that as an example. And That's also, con con cool. con convenient, conveniently, the one I grabbed says back us on Kickstarter. So <laughs> that was, I told, I tell, I'm telling you guys, that was an accident. It was an accident. Um, but, um, but yeah, so that's that's a cool thing that, like, um, sometimes, like, if you have a game where you just want to, like, take a picture of all the components, and you can just, like, crop them out and then drag them in from your phone or something like that, that's, like, a mm -hmm. quick way. A great example of that that we've used is, like, um, if anybody plays Root, the player boards are, like, really big. So the way that I brought the player boards in is I just took a photo of them and then brought them in as JPEGs. And, you know, that, that was an easier way to deal with it. So Nice. Yeah. Now, um, are there other features? That, there are definitely some features here that we haven't covered. Yeah, I mean, like, um, one that we haven't talked at all about is dice rolling. Um, so the system does have the ability to roll dice um, and then, like, report the results out to, out to all the sessions. Um, and then it can do uh, custom dice. So like I'm doing like zombie side dice right now. I'm trying to get a zombie head to appear. Come on, there's a zombie hey. head. Um, and so, you know, you will have the ability to build dice profiles kind of in like a dice builder and then save them for use. Um, a good example is another good example. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, if people, again, if people play root, yeah, there's like a, just a bunch of D12s um there's a there's the root dice they're weird they just have like a couple zeros a couple twos a couple threes um so essentially we've we've been messing around just building dice in the platform but that's like a tool that users would be able to do nice um and then um beyond that uh, sam, the... sam could show off the game components really quick just oh, as yeah. like a you know that's a very beta thing right but if you wanted to talk about that while sam kind of played around with it yeah, so, so um, we, we don't have this all the way done yet, but um, we'll have the ability to bring in what we're just calling like game components. Uh, and an example of that is like a health tracker. Um, and then you can like increase and decrease numbers on them. Um, we're not 100% sure on if we'll just have a subset of shapes and, and functionality yet, or we'll let you build those yourself. Um, but, but essentially for things that you don't want to scan in, um, or you want to keep score in the system or whatever, we'll let you have little doohickeys that you can use, like little chits and hearts and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's super useful. Um, and then let's see there. Uh, I know we kind of saw this earlier where like you kicked the, the camera. There's actually oh, yeah. a button on the thing where you can get the cameras to refocus if they go out of focus. Um, just as like a way to get that done. Um, yeah, and that's and unfortunately that's that's a little bit of like an artifact of strange uh, uh, phones. So like right. most modern phones have really good like uh, continuous autofocus, but there are like some old ones that we want to be able to support. So that's a good thing to note is that um, right now all the app the app that's needed to run this on the phones works on Android 5.0 forwards. And then we've tested on iOS, starting with the iPhone 5 forwards. And so that's kind of what our baseline would be. On the Android side, I, or Android 5.0 forwards, like that covers a really far way back. Um, so that brings a lot of phones into play. Um, we're gonna recommend having as new a phone as you can get, but like the one that I've been using to stream tonight is a Moto 3 uh, from, I think, like 2014. So okay. it definitely works with older devices. Um, but for the card scanning box, we'd recommend having a little bit more powerful phone because that one has to do some processing to pick up the cards. Yeah. And just so that you all know, like, I I showed off the uh, equipment here. Uh, I, I actually installed the app on my phone and was playing around with it and was able to do the the board streaming and do a lot of different card scanning. And uh, I mean, it's actually as easy as it appears. Uh, you know, the card scanning is super quick and super high quality. And even the, even scanning by hand, if you're not using the box is pretty good. It's just a matter of like 
you have to like hold the phone really still obviously or you might it might take the scan at a moment when you're shaking the phone a little bit too much um but you know that's kind of where the box comes in and helps you make a much higher quality scan um yeah another... and there was a good question from kate bots earlier about like how long does it take to set up a game and that's like a valid concern so like i want to be clear um as a hoster as a hoster sorry that's terrible as a host um there is there definitely is like more labor that you do as the host because now you're responsible for sort of keeping track of some stuff um and depending on the game you might be moving the pawns of the remote players or maybe just making sure all their cards are in a pile neatly or whatever um but it so it does add a little bit of effort for whoever is playing local and then depending on the game like let's say you need to scan in 10 cards before the game starts that might take you three or four minutes or something right, right. So just get everything in make sure you have them looking the way you want and size yeah. the way you want or whatever but like it definitely isn't adding it's not like we're adding like hours of time for the local yeah. player or something like that uh i also wanted to address kate's other thing here of like could i have hosted as well as james you can have as far as i'm aware like you can have more than just the two phones connected to this session um scanning in cards i i assume you could also just have multiple boards as well because it would just spawn them in right correct yeah you um, can and we've experimented with that a little bit like um i i don't think our stuff is um updates fast enough to maybe play like something like magic where you one person has the phone on one end and one person has the phone on the other end and you're both taking photos of your own tabletops and you're playing the cards down in front um yeah. It, it, just because like i've watched people play magic i'm not a magic player myself but like magic game it's fast yeah people are like boom yeah. boom 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 you know really quick yeah. um but if you are playing a game where both people have the components and it's a little bit like slower speed not as fast as that you could do that you know you could yeah. be playing on your end jordan and i'd be on my end and that would be fine yeah, yeah. If, if you're not worried about the speed magic is a great example for how the tech could work from a logistical standpoint right. because each of you have your own physical deck Right. That is the deck that you have built. And so you would be able to shuffle and draw and scan those cards in as they went out right. um, into the system. So if you if there are other games where that makes sense from a logistical standpoint, you could absolutely have your own phone uh, contributing into yep. uh, the thing. And if you had like a huge tabletop setup, like, I don't know, Twilight Imperium or something really crazy that's just like very, very large. You could have like multiple cameras taking photos of the board if you wanted to cover a larger area um, and then put those boards in the app kind of right next to each other. Um, but like our arm that we use can get like 42 inches off the table, I think. So like it's really nice. long. So generally speaking, it's going to be able to handle, I think, most table setups that right. you come up with. Especially since you can scale the resolution that the phone is taking those images at if you're right. farther away. Correct. Yep. Um, cool. And then um, Kbots asked what, uh, what Vorpal was, and, and people mentioned like the blade, and like that's right. It's from that the, po the poem, the Jabberwocky, which is like a nonsense poem by Lewis Carroll, and it's like kind of a, a kind of a sad story. But like we use it as an internal code name just because I thought it sounded cool. And then it when does. It, 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 then when it came time to like name what we were building, we tried like all sorts of like digitable and you know cyber top and all sorts of stuff like that. <laughs> This but is like, better than um, those. <laughs> yeah, we ended up like liking just that it didn't mean anything. Um, it had yeah. kind of like a, a, a rough connection to D&D because there is a Vorpal Blade in D&D. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, also there were no domains available. Right. So it, it's like that Saturday Night Live yeah. sketch where it's like it was the last domain available. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what it actually reminds me of is it makes me think of like vortex yes we we thought like right. a vortex and a portal together kind of right. like a, yeah exactly so it, it evokes this imagery of like you're taking the physical components and you're like putting them through the vortex into this digital yes game. Yep. so it, it definitely works as a name yeah thanks um we actually originally the icon we went more simple with our icon to be kind of the hex die type of thing but um Originally, it was it was a hex that was kind of like a vortex, like like swirling down into uh -huh. it, like the visual of like, yeah, we're portal, you know, it's a big portal or something. Um, but we wanted to, from a UI perspective, we really were trying to make it so like our stuff was as absolutely dead simple looking so that the, right. ga that the game was the more interesting thing. Like we're always going to be streaming cool art from board games. So like we wanted our stuff to be like black and white, clean, modern, 
and right. focus the colors coming out of the board game itself instead of our app. We didn't want a lot of like decoration and stuff. Right. Uh, another cool feature that uh, I've been playing around with here as we've been talking is uh, if if Sam like scrolls in or out really far, there's actually a button on the bottom that says zoom extents that will like perfectly zoom the contents of the that you have put into the board so that you can see everything and not have to like fiddle with like what is the perfect zoom level to see to fit everything on your screen which i think is a really cool feature that just takes one extra level of fiddliness out of the app i wanted to point that out because it's yep. definitely definitely yeah, you, it, it's one of those especially like if you're on a laptop or something and you get like lost and you're like way moved over it's nice to just like be able to click the button and get it back to where you're supposed to be yep um and then um uh, the line in the hex is supposed like it, it's supposed to be like if you look at it one way it's a hex with a line on it but if you think about it as a 3d object it's a die like a, a, a dice that's turned right so it's like depending it's one of the it's almost like um the the artist we were working for was going for like one of those like oh it looks like two it looks like a woman's face now it looks like two uh vases next to each other right uh what's the word what is the word what's that called optical illusion Thank you. Thank gosh. Um, so kind of an optical illusion where it starts as a hex sometimes when you see it and other times it looks like a tilted die. Yep. We call it the hex die. So. I, I, I saw it as a hex until I looked at the button for configuring the dice right yeah. below it. And then I put two and two together. Right. And now it, like it probably now you'll like see it as a die forever. It's one of those things where like, yeah. once it snaps, then it snaps. Yeah. That's um, cool. Cool. Well, um, you know, I first of all i just want to say like i think this is a really really cool product um i think chat definitely could see like how useful this is uh you know all of us are remote here we're all in different places uh sam is actually running the stream right now james has the physical game and the board You know, Sam and uh, Mr. Draco, do you have any particular thoughts that you wanted to share about the experience that you had? Well, I got a question for James real quick. Sure. He, you mentioned like moving pawns and I, before we started streaming, you mentioned playing Zombicide on the game too. Yep. Um, how does Vorpal Board or do you even have plans to like implement 3D models or something for characters to move around the pawns and miniatures themselves versus the host doing it. So we so one way we have done that before is kind of like what we've done tonight where we would bring in a little icon that we, we wouldn't actually put the real icons on the board. Uh, we would have the board be streaming so you could see the zombies moving in around you but then people would move a digital piece in the space here, but it would still only be 2D or it would be a photo of the pawn. It wouldn't be a 3D piece. Um, we haven't made any plans to bring in 3D models or, or really get into like the tabletop simulator type stuff. We're really kind of focusing on just keeping it at like uh, yeah. 2D, 2D images. Um, but what we do for Zombie Side, which might actually make you really like it, is we actually do, I, we take the camera and do something like this with it. Um, Hopefully we're going to get, yeah. So we'll do it at like an angle. Oh, you're going to, this is, uh, chat's going to kill me. You're going to see my terrible table. Um, but we do it at like a, we do it at like a 30 degree uh, angle. And the reason we do it is like, so you can actually see the minis. Like we don't right. do it, we don't do it as a straight up. We do it as at an angle and then you can actually see the height of the miniatures and you can actually, cause like those games, you care about the miniatures, right? Yeah. Um, and so it, 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 it helps it make make it more feel like you're playing the game instead of just like looking at something from the very yeah. top down. And like we play Gloomhaven that way. There's some videos of ours on YouTube that you could check out of us playing Gloomhaven and Zombie yeah. Side that um that maybe will kind of help with yeah. that. It, it's Great. funny that you say that, James, because uh, that's actually something that's been talked a lot about in the board game streaming industry in general. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago at TwitchCon, I got the chance to work to be on a panel where 
uh, some of the other people on the panel had actually done an A-B test week over week where they were playing the same game, but they changed the camera angle back and forth between a straight overhead shot and an angled shot. Yeah. And they found that they got better engagement and higher viewership when they did the angled shot because people liked the over-the-shoulder feel of like, I am sitting at the table rather than the straight on shot from directly above the board yep. felt more unnatural to people. Yeah, and it, it really depends on game a lot. Like, so when we play cryptid, like we shoot it pretty much right over top, maybe yeah. with a little bit of an angle because you can sort of see the standing stones, the verticality of the standing stones. Right. Um, but you know, Jordan and I, or Jordan, you and I have talked about this a little bit too. It's like, I think there's something to be said about sort of seeing the shadows and the lighting of the pieces that makes it feel more like you're actually playing the game. Like it makes your, it tricks your brain a little bit into like it just feels like you're looking through a window instead of being you know you and I, we're all like three thousand miles away or whatever right so um so yeah the overhead shot i i totally agree i think it it feels more um sterile than than that that angled shot yep uh did you have any thoughts that you wanted to share in general sam no i mean in general i think i think it's pretty cool um i think i would love to hear more from chat uh and you guys can tweet us, tweet at us, or tweet at Board for Board online, because um, we we've definitely been thinking about, hey, like how could we make our games more interactive? So, if you guys feel like this would be a good way for that to happen, uh, yeah, let us know. Um, definitely figure out ways of maybe like this is how we manage board states and manage how we zoom in on cards for you guys in the future. Yeah, yeah. I've already voted for Jordan to buy one, so. <laughs> I am curious about that too because, um, uh, you know, we, we, we have the whole photo thing for the board, uh, which I think is like that's a big nod to, to um, making it play, making the game play better. But from a presentation standpoint, like I was always curious about would it work on Twitch or would people look at it and be like, oh, I'd rather see the video and not deal with this kind of updating board uh, right. image. Um, so yeah, I'm always, I'm curious if people like to watch it. I mean, I think playing it is good, but you know, I don't know what the watching experience yeah, is Yeah, I mean, like. we, we've also talked, Jordan and I have talked about for the stream after, after you demoed it for us on like, it'd be cool to have like a guest mode where, you know, we can give out like access to just do the zooming in, right. To, to look at stuff and zoom in, but not adjust the board state. Right. Um, you know, that yeah. could, so that no, no access cool. to camera or mic or board, just zoom tool and being able to like, you know, move the board, like move their view around. Right. As a spectator. Spectator mode is basically what it would be. Yeah. And the trickiest part, the trick. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, I think we could. The trickiest part will be um, what we do if we still stream them your video in Vorpal or if they would get that from, they would get that from Twitch. You know, and so they could go in and actually like have another window open in Vorpal looking at the board. And then they would also have your Twitch stream going at the same time. Um, I don't know if that would in, in, you know introduce weird latency stuff between you guys are making changes at different times on the board. Anyway, uh, I, I, I like the idea. I think we should I think we should continue to chat about it because um, we do have a lot of flexibility in how we do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, for me, I I'm really excited just about like the the scan and zoom ability is really helpful uh especially for us as streamers because that's a thing getting the like fine details of a game is hard with just a camera unless you have like really really expensive equipment um yeah i was and... watching something on bgg con where they were like phys they had some sort of physical zoom on that thing yeah that that, that they were zooming it in really tight and i was like holy moly like that's probably a very expensive camera <laughs> yeah unless you have like a you know twenty thousand dollar black magic setup uh, <laughs> most people aren't able to do that kind of right that kind of quality and so this is a really cool way to solve that i mean i could even see you know one way that you could use this is just pull up vorpal board um make it really small and scan cards in and drag them into the really small visible place that is captured in the stream as like a section of the stream where you can drop cards as they're, you know, I played a card, I want chat to be able to see it. So I scan it really quick and drag it into that visible area. Right. Um, and because the background is, you know, white, 
you know, what well, another thing that could be cool is if you could like change the background color and then we could chroma key the background, right? Right, right, um, yep. stuff like that. Yep. Um, so, but you know, there's definitely a lot of possibilities of like different ways that we could use it uh, as streamers. Uh, I, de I mean, I think, you know, everyone who's been here during the stream tonight can definitely see the use for it just as like a remote gaming group thing. Right. Um, and that's, you know, I really appreciate that because getting a gaming group together, especially if you live in a big city like Sam and I do, is difficult. You know, people, you know, we, Sam and I, it takes us 35, 40 minutes to drive up to San Francisco or vice versa. So like if we have friends who are in the city and they want to play games with us, that's like whoever's go whoever's traveling to the other person that's like a decently large commitment it's not like you're going around the block to somebody's house yeah uh but if we could just be like hey let's play a game this afternoon and we could all just jump on vorpal and i could have this set up in you know on a table in my house and we'd all just play remote sam wouldn't even have to come over to my house even though we live relatively close together uh and that way you know sam could get the benefits of not having to endure my company <laughs> yes this has been a great stream and like there are you know the one thing to sort of the mental exercise to go through is that there are games that like the setup is essentially nothing right like if you yeah. play if you play cryptid on this there's no setup you just you you're setting up the game and you just have the camera over the table there's no scanning in or anything like that um or if you're gonna play a great one that we play a lot is code names like code yeah. names is like perfect for this thing because you actually can have the camera close enough to the cards that you can read them fine so there's yep. no scanning you know you can you can have uh, we have like we do it with like a couple's night for code right. where we have like everybody is on yeah. in their same location um yeah so there are like once we once i had it once i had it available to me i started figuring out all of these different ways i could use it with different groups of friends and family which is really nice yeah and i can see how code names would be great because you just you scan in the answer key and then the two That's people it. who are the spy master just pick it up and set it back down over and over and trade it back and forth. Yep, exactly, exactly, yep. And they can turn off their cursors so that you don't have to see that. So yeah, that that's that makes sense. One Deck Dungeon? I still haven't played One Deck Dungeon. <laughs> one day, one day. Yep, I haven't either actually. Everyone always recommends it to me, but I've never played it myself. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, there's different things you can do. Like you can turn the video on and off. Uh, Mr. Draco's had his video off. Uh, you can turn your audio on and off. Um, you know, you can change your name in the game. So we all put in custom names so that you can kind of do that. So there's a, you know, all, all, a lot of little things in here that we hadn't even talked about yet, uh, that are definitely add to the experience and make it more seamless and more you know ready for a gaming group to do their thing um and i feel like in a lot of ways uh this product also is very close to you know it has a lot of feature parity with something like roll 20 as well like you have a grid and you have dice and you know you'll eventually be able to spawn game components and uh having the ability to do scanning gives you a nice way to get high quality images in as well so i could definitely see this being something that uh you use for role playing or storytelling games um hey thanks for stopping by mace um and uh you know another thing that i've been thinking about is uh we had a lot of fun playing dialect uh a while back and dialect is a pure storytelling game where throughout the game the main things that you do is you uh, there are some cards that get dealt all to all the players that get played uh, rarely. And then there's uh, custom like cards that you write on. You basically write on like index cards. And so I could definitely see taking that game and laying out the very sparse board layout and then just scanning in the index cards after you've written on them to right. put those custom cards into the game. And then we would have the audio and the video to be able to do the meat of the game which is literally just playing a storytelling game yeah um, and i've heard like good feedback from our beta testers on like time stories as well which yeah. is you know like um uh, you know you did some card scanning to get them in but then it's a lot of kind of thinking and talking um and the video mm -hmm. chat like gives that to you um i did show while you were chatting there jordan just sort of like you do have the ability to copy cards so 
Like yeah. you can do a bank of cards, which, you know, if you think about like a Settlers of Catan, you, you scan in just the five resources and anytime somebody needs one, they can just copy the wood yeah. they need or whatever. So, so the host doesn't have to sit here scanning in all those yeah. cards because that just takes a lot of time. In fact, if anyone was curious how we got these player tokens, that's exactly what James did is he copied one and then just changed the size and scaled it down. And so that's like a quick way to take something that you need multiple of and you can just scan it once and then you can have as many copies as you need. Um, and then the dice to answer a question that just came through from from Meat Bomb. So the way that the dice builder currently works is we actually interface with um, with an icon library. So you can kind of search for and bring in your own icons and then choose like numbers of sides and what icons you want on each of those sides. So we don't actually scan in the real dice. So what that means is that like sometimes we have to find a uh, icon that kind of is a good approximation for what we're looking for. Um, so like, uh, I think I did an example of like zombie side. Yeah. So like that zombie head is not the same. That's not the official zombie side logo. Um, we are building the thing so that we would be ready for bringing in actual assets. If like a publisher came to us and said like, we'd like to have the real zombie side picture in there, we'd say, fine, great. Yeah. Like, let's do it. But we also want to just have the ability to let you build what you need. Um, because there are, you know, there are publishers who don't have time or uninterested or games are out of print or whatever that you know you're not going to get assets for a game you know that, yeah. that you might want to play and we just want you to be able to play it if you if you, if you own the, the board game right if you own the physical game we want to let you be able to play it with with remote players awesome um sam mr draco did you all or sorry not sam and not Dr. Draco. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to add something to what Jordan said earlier about the audio and video up top. I thought that audio thing was for y'all. I didn't know that was for my microphone. Oh, yeah. You can turn off your own. So, that is for your mic. Yes. Yeah. So I'm sitting there thinking, to me, it'd make more sense to, re to rename that to mic, mic. or something yeah. else. All right. Ooh, yep. good call. I actually think I might I might do like mic, mic and, and camera. Camera. And camera. Yeah. yeah. Instead of audio and video. So that, that or, look, look at this. There, we got feedback coming in. I love it. Or like if you want to like keep an audio, but have it for y'all and then add a mic button for me. Yep. Cool. Ooh. So that way I can move y'all at a push of a button. Like if I needed to or something. Yep. Jordan dropping gift subs in the channel. That's did, I right. see a, did I see a ton of subs just blow in there? Yeah. Yes. I want to thank everyone who's been hanging out with us tonight and checking out this awesome game. So just dropped a bunch of subs out there. Welcome, Meat Bob, Play Brand Standing, Dark Citadel, Pup Time, Vorpal Board, Goat, Horses on Demand, Console Lover 12, Shiggy 135579, and the Citadel Hub. Hope you all enjoy those brand new subs. Fresh and hot out the oven. Awesome, thank you. And really, thank you guys, because um, you know, like uh, you were you you were little guinea pigs uh, tonight, and you've been guinea pigs with just like the hardware and getting the software set up on your end too, as well, Jordan. So um, I definitely appreciate taking a chance on just running a game and committing to like two hours of playing a game uh, on un incomplete software. So that's the same thing i say to yeah. my beta testers all the time like thank you <laughs> right since we run into this issue setting up what browser is this compatible with okay so this this will be this currently is it has an issue in firefox there's there's a bug with the camera support in firefox so we needed to not have um we had an issue when mr draco was getting started that he wasn't in chrome so right now it's it we're running i think everybody's probably running in chrome um but the the actual released version I believe we'll be we'll be capable to be run on anything other than Internet Explorer. I'm I'm not willing to commit to Internet Explorer because of how they do um, some of the technology that we use. But Firefox will be supported. Opera, Safari, um, Chrome uses one that I had never heard of before. What is it, Sam? Sorry. Oh, Vivaldi. Vivaldi. No one's a, ever heard of it. It's which fine. is a, which is a Chromium a Chromium thing. So <laughs> so yeah, that cool that will be it. corrected, Mr. Draco. Yeah, this wasn't mentioned before, so like, yeah, yeah, that, that the was viewers, my bad. Just let the viewers know, hey, right now it's yeah, and again, that that's just because this is you know this is all prototype. Uh, you know, obviously, right now we're demoing on Android phones, but of course, iOS is going to be supported. Uh, you know, this is just a matter of like what is what is currently available. Um, I'm sure the Kickstarter also has details about what's going to be supported as well. 
Yep. Um, so if you have specific questions about your browser or phone or whatever, definitely go check out the Kickstarter, Kickstarter to get that question answered for you. Um, but yeah, uh, I think this is just an awesome product. Um, I definitely want to uh, do more work with this. Um, so thank you, James, for sending us the prototype and working with us to show this off tonight. Uh, I think we're definitely going to be finding more ways to use it in our streams to come in the future. Uh, I know chat had an awesome time being able to see this and, you know, chat can speak for themselves, but I do feel like, uh, you know, we do have like a much cooler viewing experience being able to show these fine details for the games that really need it. Um, and, you know, we do we do have games that we play where this is going to be very useful for, or games that we chose not to play because we realized that uh, the way the game lays out and streaming it would just not work that well as a viewing experience. And uh, I'm very excited to see what we can do with this product to to solve that problem and expand, you know, both expand the type of games that we play and to just make it a higher quality experience for the viewers. Cool. And then uh, one question I'd have for, for chat, I guess, and you guys too, if you have any experience with it, but like a piece of feedback I get a lot, or at least kind of like a knee jerk reaction I hear a lot is like, well, why wouldn't I just use like Google Hangouts and, and point a camera at the table? Like I play that way with my friends and it's free. Um, and like I built this thing. So like my initial reaction is like, yeesh, well, playing something on Google Hangouts is awful. Um, it, you, you've now played like a full session of a game, right? Like, yeah. What would you say to that person who says, well, I'm just going to use Facebook Messenger or I'm just going to use Skype and I'm just going to take my webcam and point it down at my table and yeah. I'll play that way? I, I mean, I, I'd even I'd even take this as like, why wouldn't I just use something like Roll20, right? Like that that's a, even, that's a more valid question, right? Um, and in, for me, I think it's a matter of the quality of bringing components into the experience. Like that's not a thing that is not a thing that roll 20 is focused on roll right. 20 is really like you can put assets in and you can you know spawn things in and it's it's really hyper focused on rpgs i think i like that while that use case is still supported this product is really hyper focused on physical tabletop games and really supporting the whole uh spectrum of what you might want to play with your gaming group. And I think that the the flexibility and the quality that you get is what would make you want to use Vorpal Board. Um, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, the while there is some equipment evol involved, it's not, I mean, if you think about it, it's not actually a lot of equipment, right? It's a box and an arm and your phone or two phones if you wanted to do both at once. Right. And that's like not a huge requirement uh, to be able to use this. You know, I think that there's a uh, you know, there's a lot to be said for being able to really bring in high quality components and get those nice zooms and uh, be able to basically pull any game out of your collection and play it remotely, which is not something that I think any other platform can really do well. Yeah, yeah, and I, I I don't like to use the word any. We can't we can't say any. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. Most. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, most. You know, it's um because there are mechanics that, like I said, there are mechanics sure. that are tough to, yeah. to emulate. But the point um, the point is, you know, you're you're solving the like 80, 90 percent use case in a in a general sense. Yeah, right? that's kind so, of our target, right? Is like get the stuff that's popular that people like to play that yeah. isn't like totally over the top with um, yeah with mechanics. Yeah, I mean, I I I think that I could pull 90% of the games off of my shelf and downstairs and bring them into Vorpal board and we could play. Cool. Yeah. We have a very specific use case. Like I, I got really into pandemic legacy with a group of yep. friends in Seattle and we were taught, like when I found out I was moving to San Francisco, we were talking about like, well, how can we play season two if I'm going to be remote, you know, even though all the technology is there, like, a lot of the decision trees require us to like look and think about stuff that's around, right? And so it's really, 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 really hard to do that when, you know, 
even if they have a set fixed camera, it's still like, all right, well, can you move it over here? Can I look at this? Can you tell yes. me what cards you have? Can you like that stuff all makes it super complicated. And so like, I mean, I, I think of it this way, like you can, people obviously record podcasts on Google Hangouts, like, but if you really want a nice podcast, you don't use Google Hangouts. You, use, <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you, you do it the right way. And I feel like it's the same thing here. Like, yes, if you're like, if you're completely strapped for the ability to like, I mean, five a month and just the host needs it just feels like so much value. If you like board games and you have friends who are in, you know, an hour away, half an hour away, like yeah. just not close enough for you to be able to just drop over. And, and I, and I think like, you know, another issue that it solves for is board states get saved, right? So, you know, how many games do you play progressively where you're like, oh, well, you know, like, let's take a break. Let's go, let's go get dinner. Let's come back. And those are all like just so much harder to do. Um, whereas this, I feel like you could essentially like blank slate the board, but all the digital assets are there and you just right. maintain it. And, and that just feels a lot e easier. Or to imagine me. a campaign game. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, one of the nice things like in our Gloomhaven campaign is like, I don't know if who, who here has played Gloomhaven or not, but like you scan in all the components for your character. And then they're just like in the phone. So like next time, I don't have to scan them all in unless I leveled up or gotten some new gear or something like that. So it makes that setup like incredibly easy and quick to get going, um, which is nice. Yeah, I wanted to read out uh, a comment from Meat Bomb in chat, which I thought was a really good point, which is uh, Vorpal seems like a must for house housebone folks and or busy schedules. Ease of accessibility is super important. Troubleshooting different programs and devices is a big barrier to fun. And I think that that's uh, a lot of important points rolled into one, which is, you know, one, like the fact that you don't have to travel at all is actually a really important thing for people who have disabilities of yeah. various types, uh, whether travel is difficult or even whether like, you know, m maybe it having to be very dexterous with a lot of small pieces is really difficult, but you can operate a computer, then you can be a remote player and let someone else handle all of the pieces. Yep. Um, you know, I think that, uh, again, also like to answer your question of like, why wouldn't I use something else is a matter of like, this is an all in one solution, right? You don't have to go and have a discord call plus roll 20 plus whatever, or, you know, you know, a lot, you, you don't have to like bring in multiple different tools and get them all working. And only the person who's hosting it has to do the setup in terms of equipment. Everyone else just goes into Vorpal and joins the game session. And, you know, going back to Sam's point, because you can save game state, it means that once you have someone who's hosting that person, like the incremental cost of setting up the more you use it is smaller than the first time cost of like installing the apps and figuring out how they work on your phone and right. getting, you know, figuring out the arm and everything. Like once you've done it once or twice, especially if you have a place where you can leave it set up, um, it becomes very easy. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and definitely like I've hosted lots and lots and lots of games. So I'm used to kind of dealing with the issues, but you're right that it, you know, a few times and you, you've got it down. And then it's, it's pretty second nature at that point. So. Cool. Um, Very cool. Chat, did you all have any final questions for James or uh, Mr. Draco, Sam, anything you all wanted to add here before we wrap up? No, I mean, I think you hit on almost all of the major points. Like this is super cool. I'm super excited. I'm, I'm probably going to back it. I know Jordan's probably going to back it. Um, and yeah, I, I am very excited to see where this this will go um, in terms of, you know, like being able to play things when your friends are away. Like I, I was telling Jordan after you gave me the demo or after you gave us the demo last time, I went and told someone at Twitch and they, they came up to me when the Kickstarter went live and they're like, oh, yeah, the two of us already backed it. And I was like, all right, I was all like, right. all right, that's awesome. <laughs> like and the he the exact. Exact same situation as you, right? His like his game buddy moved to Texas, and yeah. now he can't play with him. And you know, this is this is just money in the bank for them, as far as they're yeah. concerned. I, I would have loved to have this product like four or five years ago when I first moved out to California because I left 
my gaming group from college behind and we're all spread out. And even if some of them are still close, I'm definitely not. And so this would have been amazing back then to be able to keep our group together and let us keep playing games together. Yeah, because I think like also it's an excuse. I I don't want to say an excuse, but like it's a good reason to get together to do a video chat, which I think sometimes is kind of hard with friends once you move away. You know, it's like not that often that you get together and look at each other and actually talk and laugh or whatever. Um, So it's like you're doing a FaceTime or a Hangout, but you're also playing a board game. Um, which I think resonates with a lot of people, especially families. Like my family, I, I video chat with my family all the time. But like now that we could actually play like code names at the same time is very compelling for us. So cool. All right. I, I I've I've given you all the all the details that I have. Yeah. I think guys. So if you guys want to go check it out, if you are still excited about it. Uh, which I hope you are because this has been an amazing demo that James has put on for us. Uh, definitely go check out the Kickstarter. I've just dropped the link in chat. Uh, they had a pretty good uh, first day this week and are over 16,000 raised. So still chugging along pretty strong. Uh, definitely go throw them some love if you think this would be good for your gaming group. We appreciate everyone who hung out with us. In chat tonight, uh, you've all been amazing, and it's been great to actually have a game where we could really get some nice uh, chat interaction going, and I think that Vorpal Board was a big part of making that possible. So uh, huge, huge thank you to James, both for uh, conceiving of and building this product, but also for taking the time to come and share it with us tonight. Uh, that, you know, it's been amazing, and I think we all had a great time. Cool. Absolutely my pleasure. Um, I love showing this this thing to people because uh, I want to know if you like it or not. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm dead serious. Feel free to reach out um, if you have any ideas or, um, or you, or you want to know more information about what we're going on. I'm always interested to hear. So. Awesome. Uh, also, thank you to Mr. Draco for joining us tonight. Uh, we always love having special guests on the stream, and it's been good to have you back in the stream once again. Oh, it's good to be back. And uh, a quick note for our upcoming streams. Uh, I'm checking the schedule because I have to remind myself. But uh, next week, we are going to be playing My Little Scythe, uh, which is, if you aren't familiar with that, basically uh, a dad designed for his daughter a My Little Pony-themed version of Scythe and put it up on BGG as a print-and-play. And it was so popular that uh, Jamie Stegmeier basically picked it up and obviously they're not using the my little pony uh ip but they rebranded it as like a uh a tiny animal themed version of scythe uh that is targeted at both adults and kids and uh is a great family game so we're going to be checking that out next week um we don't have all of next month solidified yet uh but we are planning to bring back another play of dialect Uh, for those of you who were with us last month when we played that. uh, And we're going to have Bree, who was here last week, back again next month to play Quacks of Quedlinburg, which was the Spiel des Jahres game uh, last year at Essen. Uh, It's a fantastic game that I'm very excited to play. So we got a lot coming up next month. Uh, Thank you, everyone who hung out with us tonight. Thank you, James, Mr. Draco. Uh, Everyone, definitely go check out the Kickstarter. And right now, we're going to go raid somebody who's playing Gloomhaven. Uh, His name is Heroes Average Adam. We're going to send you all over there to go hang out with him and have some awesome Gloomhaven fun. So definitely uh, go over there and show him some love. Use our raid message. And we will see you all next week. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.